Hey gang, for today's tutorial we are going to sculpt a realistic human skull in Blender 3. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So you can see here I've prepped my file with some reference images. Uh, I have a skull from the front, and then if I come in here and turn this to the side, I also have a skull from the side. I prepared these in Photoshop, so I found some reference images online. And you know, somebody else took this photograph, so things are slightly off. Right, I had to change the scale just a little bit and the tilt of the skull relative to the ang angle of the camera might be a little bit different. So this is not going to be a perfect thing. Also, you should note that the details in here, right, and that sort of three-quarter view are not captured by either of these two images. So at a certain point, you're going to start from the images, but then you'll have to sort of leap off and make some artistic choices. I've also saved these images out as uh, PNGs with transparent backgrounds just to make them a little easier to see. And then finally, I have this uh, third reference image in here, which talks a little bit about the uh, the structures of whoa, getting all over the place. Uh, the structures of the body. Uh, some of the ones that we're going to be particularly interested in are, of course, the uh, the orbits. The fact that the nasal bone kind of projects out a little bit before it um, disappears because that was cartilage. We're also really interested in the zygomatic bone. That's one of those um, fascinating ones that really makes a skull look like a skull. And also, I want you to notice how from the front, the eye sockets just appear to be holes, you know, kind of push straight in. But if you come over here to the side, you'll see that one edge of the eye socket kind of marches way forward next to the nasal bone. And then this thing drops way back until the outside edge of the orbit is kind of farther back. So, so that'll be a confusing thing we'll have to work on as we go. We should note that here, the, uh, the maxilla, right? So that's the part of the bone that defines the, um, the top part of the jaw. It's actually quite narrow compared to the rest of the skull, so this area is going to push way in uh, horizontally compared to the zygomatic bone. And then the mandible, of course, the lower jaw. Notice how the teeth project, too. Right? The teeth kind of pop, pop out a little bit. They're not as flat as you might think. Okay, so that's just our anatomy image. We'll have that sitting in the background. We've got these two guys right here, so let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, step one, we're going to introduce a couple of geometric primes. You know, So for this, I might make a new collection and just call this skull, or like, although I think ultimately there's really only going to be one form we're working with, unless you choose to make separate teeth. Uh, I'll shift A, let's add a mesh, and then we like to do our round cube thanks to uh, the add-on extra objects, and we like our round, cu round cubes to have a radius of one, and let's say that the arc is six. So when you're getting ready to do some sculpting, you want to make sure not to make things too refined, because if you have too many polygons too early, it's just going to be too easy to add little tiny bumps and folds that you're going to have to smooth out later. So you always want to be working from really big, giant details down to smaller and smaller details until you arrive at the end. Uh, the other benefit of that is the more polys you have, the slower the computer is going to work. Mm. So we want to save that uh, for as long as possible and keep our computer nice and snappy. But who knows, maybe you've got some incredible gaming rig and that's not really a concern of yours. It's a concern for me. <laughs> okay, so let's take our first sphere. Uh, I'm going to rotate this guy a little bit and then G for grab, kind of pull it into place. And then watch this, if I scale on the X axis, right, because I have yet to accept my transformations, that X scale is going to work correctly even though this thing is rotated. So nice little feature there, rotate a little bit more. Maybe I'll come in here into wireframe to get a better sense of exactly where I'm at. And I'm going to get this thing close, but not exactly right, because after all, the, um, the form that we're making is a lot more complex than just a couple of geometric primes. So close, but not perfect is perfectly fine. Okay, now that I have this selected, I'm going to Shift D to duplicate. X to constrain the movement in the X axis, and I'll drop it. And then R to rotate, and I'll kind of rotate it back around the other way. Scale it down a little bit, G to grab, kind of get this thing into place, rotate it out, scale it in maybe X or something like that. And then get that thing down into place. So again, this is going to be imperfect as well. Let's try scaling this in not Y. We want to scale it in Z. Well, you know what? Maybe that is still scaling on two different axes. So it could be that you want to do some of the scaling before you get down to moving things around. But, you know, honestly, it really doesn't have to be all that close for the, um, the next step that we're going to do. So let's go back to shading mode, kind of take a look at what we've got. Whoa, I scaled that way too much on Y. Let's grab these, scale them on Y. And then we're looking from the front. 
Oh man, this thing's flipping all over the place. Great. Uh, scale this guy in Y and kind of wide them out like that. Okay, so yeah, th so that's an important lesson too, right? You always wanna make sure to be checking back and forth with your different views, because if you just use that kind of 2D mindset, you'll often wind up making something look great from one angle and super weird and squash from another angle. Uh, all right, so now that we're ready to move forward, we wanna take these two objects and uh, just in case, I'm going to go to Control A once they're both selected. Not just in case, you, you definitely have to do this. And um, say Apply All Transforms, right? So now that that thing, now that thing, we've sort of reset it so that this is the zero state as opposed to remaining or remembering its rotations and so on. Then I'm going to Control J, and you'll see that now the outline goes around the whole thing. And now this object is regarded as kind of one piece. But to make that official. I'm going to go here and tab into edit mode, and you can see if I look at the wireframe, we still have overlapping geometry in here, right? And I don't care about any of that stuff on the inside. I want to start thinking about this just as one giant piece. So what I'm going to do is, um, I think I need to be in sculpt mode to get this done. I'll switch over to sculpt mode. Nothing appears to change, and then I'm going to go up to remesh. So if you like to have a little visual menu to pull down, you can do this up here. Uh, but what I like to do is just say Shift R, and that'll kind of give me a sense of the default remesh and where it's heading. So you see how those squares that are being shown are smaller than the squares that I've got in my base model, right? That's because we're going to increase the refinement here. You might also find it useful if you go to remesh and then click on this little eyedropper. I can click here on our base mesh, and then if I go back up to remesh again, I can see that right now the uh, quad size is about 0.4. So if I hit Shift R, um, now it's, you know, well, before it defaulted to 0.1, but now it's all the way up at 0.4. So maybe I would just bring this down to 0.2 or something like that to get a sense of where to start. And depending on the scale that you're working in, your, your numbers may change, right? So you want to try to do things, um, you want them to look visually the same as mine, but the numbers aren't necessarily going to be the same. Okay, now Shift R is going to change the intended voxel size, but nothing has really changed yet. So now I hit Control R, and you'll see that now we've we've reevaluated the piece so that it has um, uh, faces that are now the correct size. And if I switch over to wireframe mode, you'll see that I no longer have overlapping geometry on the inside. So that's what I've got there. Uh, all right, so now let's get in here to start to sculpt this thing. Uh, the first thing I'll do is to come in from, say, the profile. And I'm going to grab one of many brushes. Take a look. There is a ton of brushes in here. But G for grab uh, in the uh, sculpture view isn't necessarily for moving whole objects, but for moving portions of objects. Uh, I can hit F on the keyboard to change my brush size. So that it's like the area of influence of the brush. So let's make this relatively large. And I'll switch over to wireframe so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, the strength up here is not really going to matter as much for grab as it will for other stuff. And now I can start to pull these pieces around. So it's important initially that I have a really big brush size, right? Because I want to make sure to grab everything over a wide area. And soon enough, you'll see that this will limit some of what I'm able to do because I'm not able to grab a smaller detail. But that's fine because we always work from major details down to smaller details. And you know what I'm going to do, at least initially, oh, you know what? I totally forgot something. So let's undo, undo, undo. This is a step that I almost always forget. And let's see if it lets me get all the way back out to here. Redo my remesh. I forgot to check um, symmetry. Ah, that's such an easy, easy mistake to make. Uh, here's my Y axis, right? I'm mirroring across the Y axis. Yours might be X, depending on how you have it set up. And now we can get in here and, uh, and get started again. Man, I always tell myself I'm not going to forget that, and I do. Okay, so we are mirroring. This is another good reason for us to always be checking you know, our front view and so forth so we can catch those problems. We're gonna start to get that jaw a little pointier, a little flatter on the bottom, kind of pull it into the face a little bit, and then try to accomplish the back of the skull. Pull that guy out. Some of these sort of lesser bones and structures that we have at the base of the skull where it relates to the neck, I'm just going to ignore those because you know we're not making like an a, a, a medical model used by professionals or something. We just want something that looks like a skull. Uh, as you start to find that you have details that are a little bit smaller, you can start to shrink down with F your brush size, and that'll let you tuck in there and accomplish some of that stuff. Uh, I definitely want my brow ridge 
But I'm going to hold off a little bit for a second on this nasal bone, because this gets confusing if we sculpt it at this moment. Make my brush even slightly smaller, and then maybe try to get a little bit of the way that that chin pokes in and out. Let's kind of take a look here and see how we're doing. Pretty good. So you can see when you're working from one side, because we head straight through, that starts to make some funny structures, right? Like this nasal bone is actually only popping out in the middle. But, um, but we, we'll get there soon. This, this process is all about doing it sort of little bits at a time, uh, chipping away at this structure. But I do have a, a sort of a, a set, an order, to which you should probably work before I leave you to your own devices. Okay, so let's take a look at the front of the face, and we're going to start to add in a couple more brushes, but really not that many. So initially, I'm just going to have you all using grab, and then we're going to work with uh, clay strips almost exclusively, maybe a little bit of draw sharp, and then some of these other ones will be useful for the teeth, like crease and uh, pinch and so forth. There is a smooth brush, but you should know that from almost every brush, you have access to smooth just by holding down shift. So if I hold down shift and I paint on this surface, you can see we're starting to smooth it out. However, right now, because the polys are so big, uh, this is going to have too big of an effect. So the smooth brush is going to be more like a carving brush. So I'm going to undo that stuff, and we'll come back to smooth later. So let's go to our clay strips. And uh, oh, uh, there's another thing I think we'll do up top as well. I'll switch back to object mode and look at this thing straight on. I'm going to bring up my reference images, and I'm going to hide my skull. And let's give ourselves a little cheat sheet so we can sort of see the most interesting outlines we want to see without having to look at the whole picture. Back in object mode, you can do this in Sculpt too. I'll go to Annotate. And what Annotate lets me do is just draw out lines right in space. So I can do that. And then if I twist, I can see that that line is just sitting there in space. It's not actually attached to that image, right? It's just uh, floating there. So let's draw the most important stuff. So we got the orbit, we have the nasal bone, and then we also have that kind of nasal opening that drops way back. Over here, this is going to be a crucial one. So there's that zygomatic bone, or cheekbone as you and I might call it. And that comes down to here. Now we're going to have our teeth. This is just to kind of give me a general sense of where that stuff's going to be. And then there's the mandible. So you can see how square the mandible gets back over here and also how the mandible is tucked in, so it's not the widest part. Uh, the, um, the, the back of your noggin as you move back is much wider. So that's what this thing looks like from the front. We also want to remind ourselves, right, there's kind of this triangular portion here. And, and this shape right here, this is actually a big hollow shape. So while, while this shape sticks out, this shape goes way back in to the, uh, to the skull, and that's something we're going to want to remember. Okay, if I look from the side, I can also give myself a reference for the uh, zygomatic bone. I just love that shape. And there's our cheeks right there. These lines do not have to be perfect. And you should notice, right, that see here when I have my eye socket, we might be encouraged to kind of close that off, but that's really not how that works. There's actually a very uh, smooth grade that comes down from the nasal bone and tucks into the eye socket and goes really deep. Now over here, this part marches way forward, but that eye socket hole is kind of doing that back behind the scenes. Okay, we come down and establish the brow and that really pronounced ridge for the nasal bone. Also that sort of area that, that splits your nostrils in two projects a little bit, at least on this skull. It's also so interesting to think about, right? Like these structures are all there in every single person kind of connecting us together. And if you get it slightly wrong, as long as it's within the realm of possibility, it's still going to look like an accurate skull, you know, maybe just not that specific person's. Uh, we should also keep in mind here, you know, right, that like that top part, I think it's the maxilla, keeps carrying on back past the uh, teeth. This area is just a hollow that, that um, goes all the way through effectively. And, uh, and this part of the uh, mandible is much wider than this part of the mandible. And then this area right here all gets really dug away. So, so this is the thing that's kind of the hardest to remember when it comes to working from images, because people will get going and then they'll turn the skull around and because that occurs in the round over between the side and the front, you'll just wind up with these really weird blocky shapes there. So we're gonna do our best to avoid that. We should also note that right here, or maybe even going back a little bit farther, there's a big flat area um, where we don't want our skull to be so round. There's actually a bunch of planes on the skull when you really take a look at them. 
Okay, so annotations, if I come up here, I can, I can name them, I can turn them on and off, but I can also turn my annotations on and off right here so they're not distracting. So let's keep those off for the moment, but we're gonna toggle that as we go. You can also just turn off kind of everything at the same time, but that loses the grid and the axes and the reference images and so on. So I'll bring my skull back, and now you might find it useful to toggle things on and off in that way. Uh, okay, so like I said, we're gonna get in here and kind of start out with the orbits. Let's bring in the annotations, go back to sculpt mode, and then I'm gonna bring in my clay strip. So I love clay strips. Clay strips is great. It's gonna be a little bit hard to tell what it's doing at first. You'll see up here, right, so here's my radius that I'm working with. We know how to change that with F. Here's my strength. Um, sometimes, at least initially, I'll just turn this all the way up so we can work a little bit faster. I'm going to stay away from all of these different variables at the moment, although I might mention that I work with Accumulate checked, and sometimes you'll find that messing around with the hardness and auto smooth will be useful to you. But at the moment, we're just making such you know gross changes to the form that it shouldn't really matter yet. You can decide to click on plus or minus up here if you want to add or subtract material. But if I come up here and start adding a clay strip, you'll see it's kind of working, but I probably need a little bit more resolution in this form to make it work well. So back to Shift R, and instead of 0.1, let's maybe bring it down to, I don't know, 0.5. Kind of hard to get exact with your tablet, and then Control R, and that'll make that thing uh, kind of smooth out a little bit. Uh, and, you know, I should say, and now we have more refinement in the polys, right? Okay, great. So we will zoom in and set up our clay strips. I'm going to hold down the control key, which automatically causes a brush that by default would be an additive brush to become a subtractive brush. And we're just going to start to collapse down that orbit. And you might remember, as I said a little while ago, you know, we have to get a lot of depth right here next to the nasal bone. Um, but also just in general, because it's not it's not like something that's drawn on the front of the skull. It really digs back in there to make room for your eyeballs. So we go and go and go. Now over time, it might be a little hard to see. You can kind of see it there. But you can see how to get this depth, because we're not changing the number of polys. We're actually stretching these polygons out, and in some cases making them bigger and making them into weird shapes. So over time, you're going to start to get diminishing returns on what your, um, what your brush is allowing you to do. And so whenever that happens, you just come in here and say Control R. And note that I didn't do Shift R again. So I want to keep the polygons the same size, but I just want to reevaluate the form so that all the polygons are the same size and not getting stretched out, same size relative to one another. And now I can get in here with Control R and keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper like that. And then as we rotate that around, you can start to see what I'm talking about, right? Like next to the nasal bone we're going way back into space and then this side of the orbit is actually much further back than what appears to be the front side of the orbit so now if i come into the side you can start to see how flipping back and forth gets weird because here the orbit is all the way up here and it looks okay in the front relative to the image right so if i toggle the skull up off and on it's in the right place at least in terms of that view but it is in the wrong place in terms of this view so we'll work on that more in just a second uh, the other thing I probably want to do is get in here with the uh, the orbit, or I'm sorry, the nasal bone. So I've got my clay strips. Maybe I'll shrink them down a little bit more. And with control, I'm going to start to carve away. And I want to let that thing kind of project out. And I'll carve away and start to get into the edges of my orbit like that. So that's just projecting out in the middle. We're going to let it flare a little bit. Um, and if I want to, you know, I can come in from the side. Oops, take a look at my reference images. Whoa, that's really different, right? <laughs> it looks like that bone needs to be way higher. So I'll get my grab brush, I'll make it a little bigger, and then I'll start to kind of pull that stuff into place. Something that looks more like that. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's pause on the front, and I'm going to come back in from the side. And now we can start to, we're going to worry about that um, uh, orbit in just a second. Well, I'm, I'm already in the grab brush, so maybe I'll start to, you can see when I pull this back, I want to make sure that I'm just grabbing this rim. And I'm going to start getting some weird folds in there if I'm not careful. 
So I might get it part way, control R, maybe come in here with a little bit of a smooth. I'm holding down the shift key. You can't, you can't get this all done at once. Okay, back to clay strips. Let's ignore the orbit for a moment and just start to work on the zygomatic bone. So we establish that cheekbone and the top of the eye. Kind of comes in here like this. Mine is adding pretty fast, but if you want to slow yours down, you can you know pull down the strength a little bit. Also, it wouldn't hurt to start to establish more of the um, mandible. So we bring that in. There's a kind of it rotates, but it also has this other funky shape on it. Or I should say it has this like rotational joint, but it's also got this area in the back. Uh, okay, that's starting to look good. I can also come in here with the opposite of my clay strips and start to dig away material I don't like as much. So we can define the zygomatic area, or any area for that matter, by both adding material where it's supposed to go and then taking it away where it's not supposed to be. Okay, we get something that's starting to look like that. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let me check my notes. Ah, yes. So we also want to start to get in here and carve away this material, too. So if you think about it, if we look at this thing from the front and then I hide my skull, uh, all this material right here is going to go. So let's start to carve that away. And I'll give myself a you know pretty distinct area. And then as I rotate this towards the side, what we can now take a look at is we might have been... It looks like we were too aggressive, but it's just because this shape just has to be less wide. And so we actually want to start to fade that in here. And I'm going to grab everything underneath the zygomatic bone and start to carve it away. And as I come over here, that's actually starting to look a little skull-like. Let's hide those things. And then I'll come back in. That's kind of all the way down to the teeth, you know. Uh, let's see. We know that there's like a pocket in here that gets really flat. We want to kind of ease that transition a little bit. Right, because before we were just way too pointy. Let's come back over here and we'll show our um, these parts again. And now, now you start getting into, it's, it's so hard to record a video for these, right? Because as you flipping back and forth, you see all this different stuff that you want to address all at the same time. So I'm going to get you guys partway there, but then at a certain point, I'm just going to bow out, and you're really just going to have to sit there and try with the brushes and kind of make it your own. But let's, let's see if we can get this orbit fixed and how it comes down into the uh, maxilla. Here, I'm carving away a little bit more stuff right there. Yeah, that's too sharp. And then maybe I'll come in and kind of smooth it a little, carve, 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 holding control. Maybe here too. Okay, let's make our thing a little bigger. I'll go to the grab brush and try to pull this stuff down, pull this stuff up, pull it down. Oh yeah, that's starting to get there. All right. You can see it's it's a little bit too straight across, but we'll we'll deal with this as we go. I'll pull this out and clay strips. I can't live without you. Kind of round that guy over. Good. Okay. I think we also might need to start building up um, the sides of this a little bit, right? Because there's like this little fin of bone that we're going to be and then it kind of comes up onto here, like that. I think even we were talking about how there's kind of a, a guy there, too. Okay, cool. So that, that'll just kind of be a placeholder. I can try to make it a little sharper as I go. So as you're working, you know, eventually you're going to find that you don't have a resolution, enough resolution to accomplish the features that you want. And of course, at that point, you just continue to remesh and make things more and more refined. Let's bring these back up, going to blow up a little bit, G for grab, and start to kind of pull these guys where they're supposed to be. So it comes way back like that. You see that gets really weird. And then I'm going to come in here with my clay strips again. I need to find out the hotkey for that. 
constantly going back and forth. And we're going to dig that way back into space. Remesh, control, dig, dig, dig. And see what we're trying to identify is we're finally getting beyond the actual correct spot of this and then digging that back into space. So now what I'll do without my training wheels on here is I'll come in with the, uh, the clay strips and just start to fill this area in. Right, and we want that to be more of a enclosed area. And by doing this, I'm making this bone way too thick over here, but that's fine. It's fine for now. Come back in, and then I added more or rather I remeshed, you know, da, 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 da. really dig this guy in there and remesh again. Okay, so that's starting to do what the skull is supposed to do. I'm going to hold shift and come in and kind of soften those edges a little bit. And then let's look in here from the side. We'll bring up this reference and see that every time I do this, it kind of moves around. And so we're constantly having to grab it and pull it back into place. But it's closer and closer to doing what it is supposed to do. Now, look again from the front, and I'm going to toggle on and off with my skull. And you can see now that this part of the, uh, the zygomatic bone, it pops way out um, from this dimension. So again, with grab, I'm going to start to pull it in like that. And that's what these, you know, these lines are good for in the annotations, is it really gets us focusing on the most important structures. So now if I come back to this side, you know, things haven't really changed that much. But when I come back to this side, things are looking a lot more realistic, where before it looked like my eyeballs were kind of melting off the side of my head. Uh, okay, great. So clay strips, let's make it real tiny. You know, we're just kind of trying to keep that thing contained. Over here, it just gets way too high up. So let's clay strips that away a little. Uh, and then maybe I want to try to like move some of that stuff back. I'm, I'm basically, yeah, getting that nasal bone going. Okay, it still looks a little funny. So let's see if we can figure out where that problem is. So it looks like we sort of are doing something like that. And defining that, I think also this just might be a little harsh. So what I'm going to do here for a little bit is just, um, you know, once you've gotten to a stage that's like this where things are, I mean, it certainly looks more skull-like than it did before, but at a certain point you just have to sit there and push and pull to make things work. So I'm just going to continue working and maybe fast forward some of this and you'll just see the process of it starting to starting to appear. Oh, and you know, right as I say that I'm I'm thinking about another brush I'll show you too. So at, at this point I can bring in draw sharp assuming I have enough resolution. So let's say that I pull this down maybe to 0.3 and control R. That's going to make it even more refined. So draw sharp is going to give me an opportunity to kind of etch a line in there. You want draw sharp to be pretty small, so it's really clear where your line is. So now I can come back in with my uh, annotations, and I can start to put in a little line for myself. Sort of show me what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, then come in from the side, and you can see that that line is way too high, you know, compared to this particular image. Um, so we have to sort of make those things work together. So maybe I'll do it on this side instead.
Okay, so at this stage we've got something that is looking pretty good. It's still got some pretty hairy details on it, and there's lots of individual spots. I feel like the eye sockets aren't exactly right. Uh, we're still trying to figure out exactly um, how we're going to deal with this transition between the uh, xiphoid and the maxilla. Uh, but I just want to show you a couple more things in terms of the generation of the teeth, which are definitely one of the, the challenges of this piece. So one way to do this would be to sort of dig the teeth out and to make them into a separate object. Sometimes this can be useful if you want to be able to remesh your teeth objects to have a much finer degree of resolution without having to remesh the entire object at the same time. Uh, that can be good if you're trying to preserve some of your computing power. Those of you who have picked up ZBrush a little bit before may also be aware of the uh, Dinotopo tools. This is dynamic topology where you can sort of force there to be lots of little polys in one area and not many in another. I wouldn't really recommend it for our purposes though, so I'm just gonna dive in here and try to make some, uh, some teeth just based on what we've got. So initially they're not gonna have quite enough resolution. Uh, we will do this again with clay strips and we're gonna go pretty small on the clay strips. And one of our big challenges here is we toggle the, uh, the skull on and off. And let me turn off the annotations for now. So the teeth are all jacked up, right, when it comes to looking at this from different views. So first of all, I had to position the image slightly off center, yeah, in order to get this done. So you can see that the, the two main teeth are scooted way over to the side, uh, those two eye teeth. And then when I come in and look from this side, when I was trying to make that comparison between the two, I kind of had to fake that, that line to get those two to work together. Um, so you can just know that um, I believe it's, a, it's seven adult teeth on either side, top and bottom, although it might be eight depending on your wisdom tooth situation, but it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so you've got your molars, your premolars, your canine, and then I believe these are the bicuspids up front, but I'd have to check on that. So it can be useful, you know, just to, this is one of those instances where you can just go look in the mirror, right, and sort of get a sense of uh, your teeth uh, shape. And then it's just, of course, that more of them are seen uh, because we, we don't have any of them hidden by the gums. So it's a little fiddly, but we come in here uh, with our skull and we start to uh, line these out. So for example, I could come in and then try to draw them with clay strips uh, so I can get something like that. It also appears that my mirroring looks slightly off compared to that line. I think this might be the line of the image, but it might not be our line of symmetry exactly. So it does appear that we need more resolution. So I will shift R and maybe we'll bring this guy down to like uh, 0.15 and remesh it all. And then as you start to go, you know, remeshing is going to start to take a little bit longer and it's going to get harder to address some of these issues, but I'm not making this video so I can show you an absolutely perfect result, right? I'm showing you the way that you need to, uh, to go about things. And then it's up to you to make the absolutely perfect result, right? So let's try coming in here. Maybe draw sharp would be useful in this case. I'll make this nice and small, and then I'll just kind of establish where I want those teeth to be. Uh, and that's not perfect. You know, they're kind of rounded over at the bottom and stuff, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Uh, we do know where we want the teeth to stop. So I'll bring up my annotations, and I can make a draw sharp right there. And I know that I've got seven teeth between here and here. So it may actually be to our benefit to come in so we can kind of reinscribe that line. Or maybe if it's too hairy, we can come in and do it again like that. Um, so we've got one tooth, two. This one is kind of like another eye tooth. The canine is kind of larger and a little bit pointy. Uh, and then you're going to have these blockier teeth, one, two, three to get us down to here. And then I can just check and see if I estimated my sizes correctly. Uh, and it looks like I probably made them a little bit too small. So depending on what you're trying to accomplish here, you know, I could get in there and I could make them a little bit bigger or I could just add in another <laughs> wisdom tooth or something like that. Um, if you want to adjust the position slightly, you can also do something like grab the grab brush, open it up a little bit, and then just kind of pull those lines around, right? So if I wanted to make these guys slightly bigger, I could come in here and kind of force them into the right positions. Um, they're going to get a little weird in the process, but that's, that's something that we can fix. Uh, okay, so if I get two of my teeth in there, 
and you're going to do the same thing for the bottom ones too. Let's just uh, toggle off and on our skull to kind of get a sense. Yeah, that's going to work out all right. Okay, so again, we go from less detail to more detail. Let's turn off our annotations. I'm going to come down and start very gently using our clay strips. Maybe I want to zoom in quite a bit for this. And I want to start to build up that tooth surface. Um, a little bit smaller even, and I think I'm going to have to go with even smaller resolution. I'm just eyeballing this. I can't see the number. And so I'll redo that. Yeah, now it's starting to take more time. But now when I do clay strips, I really want to be able to see the effect I'm having, and that's starting to look pretty good. Don't want to make those teeth square, right? They're always kind of rounded. Um, and if we're doing a real person, you know, it's so rare that the teeth are perfectly symmetrical, but for this project, that's what we're going to do. I think they tend to be a little more pointy at the top, you know, in terms of the way that they taper. So we're going to kind of build those up. Now this process is going to make for these really kind of puffy teeth, and we're going to have an opportunity to smash them back down uh, in a minute. But as I bring my teeth together, I want to start to make them pretty tall right there in the middle, and then I can use this trick. So here, let's um, open this up a little bit, hold shift and smooth those out. So those are starting to look pretty good. You can see um, here that they're a little bit too rounded over, right? So I want to come back in, and I want to start building up the bottom there uh, so they wind up more flat. But this, this process is really interesting just to get you thinking about your own body, you know, like the way that you have this feeling like, yeah, of course I know what teeth are like. I've had some my whole life. <laughs> but then you get in and start studying them, and they're maybe a lot weirder than you, uh, than you thought. So we can get in there and, you know, we can grab stuff, for example. So if I bring this out and grab the grab brush, you know, I can kind of pull the teeth out at the bottom and out at the top. And once you get that shape looking pretty good, and you get in there and maybe smooth it a little bit, then you can start to mess around with these brushes like pinch. So it may help to put a crease in here first. Let's try it without a crease first. So if I come in here and I start to run the pinch brush, you see it kind of pulls those things together. And then I think that's just my image showing up in the background. Yeah, so I'll hide the reference images. So th this was one of the things that was really tricky for me when I was starting out with modeling. Like how do I accomplish a fold or a crack between two things that just doesn't look like it's you know completely filled in right and so you build up from either side you get those things pretty close together and then you start executing the pinch another thing you can do is to use the crease brush right which will start to crease stuff and then crease is also used in combination with pinch to kind of finish that form off although here you can see my polys are really getting pushed to the absolute limit so we'll undo that one too Okay, so rather than show you how to make absolutely an entire skull, I think this gives you a good foundation. There's plenty of things that I could change about this skull to make it better, so this is definitely not where I want you to wind up. I want you to get to this part and then go way beyond it. But this is going to involve laying in all of these teeth, you know, getting all these forms perfect so that the skull doesn't just look good from the front and the side, but, you know, three quarters. So I still have some work to do getting my orbits to fit in there correctly. But there's no substitution for just spending a lot of time with the tool, right? So I want you to work away. It's going to take hours to get this thing done. Um, I just tried to get you um, off, you know, get the ball rolling, get you started. And then when you're done with this, you should have it to a high degree of resolution. You can also take a look at some anatomy books online, and you can see, like, there's, like, little holes for nerve channels and stuff that show up. You can also get into some of the... Um, the cracks that you see, right, the sutures where the skull pieces were fusing as the, uh, as the skull developed. And then in the next video, we'll talk about how to vertex paint this object uh, to give it um, uneven coloration, and then we can push this out as a really fancy render.